This video is brought to you by Skillshare. So in 2019, I ordered a Tesla solar roof and it took 424 days to be completed. Now it's been in operation for over eight months. So I thought it might be a great time to take a look at the data and see how it stacks up with my expectations. We take a look at my electricity bills from previous years to now take a look at the monthly solar generation. And finally, after a month of zero rain in sunny, drought-stricken California, my roof has built up quite the dust layer. And I'm going to actually clean my tiles to find out if it increases my energy production. All of this in this video. All right, let's take a look at the data. First of all, I'm gonna show you the Tesla app, give you an overview of what has been produced over the past eight months. This is the app and you see that I have two batteries and it's charging right now because the sun is out. It's a little cloudy today. So we have 2.8 kilowatts being produced from the sun right now. 1.7 of that goes into the grid. One kilowatt is actually used to run the electricity in the house right now. And then a little bit goes into the battery. If I would draw electricity right now, the city would charge me per kilowatt hour, 16 cents, I believe. If I feed it back to the city, it will count as 16 cents that they have to eventually give me. It's a credit, it's a net credit. So if let's say I'm using more electricity than I'm actually producing and I'm pulling electricity out of the grid, I can use up that credit. Okay, so you kind of understand the system. Now let's look at today. This blue one is home usage. So, so far today I've consumed 7.9 kilowatt hours. This is how much I've produced today so far, 5.1 kilowatt hours. If you see that curve, you can see it's quite disrupted and this has to do with the cloud cover that's currently happening today. Let me show you what a regular day looks like. This is how I'd say 85% of every day, uh, this kind of smooth curve is what happens in California with so many sunshine days. So in the morning, it starts off as the sun is coming from around the horizon and it's going higher and higher. The production increases as it hits the perfect angle towards the roof. And then at some point in the afternoon, like 3 p.m. or so, it comes down by, I'd say like 7 p.m production stops completely. So this is a normal day. And as we're going backwards, the tendency should be that it's higher because the best time in terms of where the sun is in the sky is gonna be around June 21st. Going back day by day, I actually discovered that my best day for solar generation was June 9th. It came in at 45.5 kilowatt hours. The days around June 21st, which should have been better because of the sun's higher path, were about three to four kilowatt hours less. And there could be two reasons for that. More dust on the panels or hotter days. Both would contribute to reducing the efficiency of my system. 99% blue skies and golden sunshine all along the way. The system size, by the way, is 7.9 kilowatts with an actual peak performance so far of around 5.9 kilowatts. Instead of doing it by day, I'm now gonna go into week. So this is what the solar generation for a week in August looks like, 247 kilowatt hours. Now, how much did we actually end up using? Overall, 254 kilowatt hours. So we produced slightly less in August in that week than we actually used, but because we're feeding back into the system at peak times, what we're feeding back is actually worth three times the amount of what we're actually pulling. If we use most of our energy, for example, like here on that Thursday to charge our car at night. Let's look at how this stacks up uh, on a monthly basis. So this is every day for the month of August. We produced 1,049 kilowatt hours. And how much did we consume? 1,334. So we are negative 
in August. And this mainly has to do that we're using more AC. I would say August and September are really the hottest months in LA. Surprisingly, September is hotter than July. I'm gonna go back one month, July. We've used 1231 kilowatt hours and we produced 1140. So we're still slightly negative. Let's go back one more month, June. We produced 1177 and we used 844. So our production is slightly higher from July. It was 1140 as opposed to 1177. But our consumption is drastically lower in June, almost 400 kilowatt hours that we used up less in June. And that has to do with June being much cooler, less need to run the AC. Let's look at this on a yearly basis, how this stacks up. So the first month in January, we used more energy than we produced. And then the next one, two, three, four, five months, we produced more energy than we actually ended up using. And the last two months, which is July and August, we are producing less than we're consuming. So overall, on a yearly basis, we are still ahead. If you look at this, we've consumed for the entire eight months, 6,778 kilowatt hours, and we produced 7,568 kilowatt hours. Okay, before we move on and take a look at my electricity build, I wanted to take you on a journey of me experimenting with cleaning the tiles. You already know California is super sunny, great advantage, sun every day, but no rain. The last time it rained was maybe sometime in March. And as you can see, my tiles are pretty dirty. How does that affect efficiency? I needed to find out. The first thing that I did is I did some research and I realized you shouldn't be cleaning them with tap water because especially here, the water is very hard. It has a lot of calcium, a lot of minerals. And if you know anything about washing your car with regular water, you have these stains there, which are these little calcium craters. That cannot be good for the tiles because it could mess with the efficiency just as much as the dust. Then I was looking into ways to filter the water, make it soft, get out all the minerals. I, I looked into systems and they run something like 400 to 600 bucks and that gives you a few hundred gallons, 200, 300, 400 gallons. But I realized this is probably just too much of an overkill, too much of an, an expense. And then I remembered I'm actually collecting rainwater and rainwater shouldn't have any calcium in it. So I just got outside and got some of the rainwater to test my theory. As you can see, I do some filtering before the water arrives in the rain barrel. So it's kind of a passive gravity system where a lot of the debris doesn't even make it into the barrel. So I'm testing the water now. I still had this TDS meter from one of the zero water filter systems that we used at some point, and I'm gonna use it now to measure. And there's eight parts per million, nine, 17, 18, so something around less than 20 parts per million. Now, how does this stack up with tap water? First, I have filtered tap water, even though it's really good at getting the, the chlorine out and, and all the toxins, we still get all the calcium in there. It's not good for filtering that. Yet, we still have 398 particles per million. And this is tap water straight without me running it through the house filter. And that comes in at 435. So the filter is doing something. It's getting some of the uh, toxins out, but uh, very little of the actual minerals. So now that we know that rainwater should do a much better job at cleaning the tiles, how do I get it from the rain barrel up on the roof? I'm going to compare my solar production before and after cleaning my tiles. But first, I'd like to thank Skillshare for their support. It's an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative or career journey. It offers thousands of classes on topics including illustration design, photography, video, freelancing and more. I'd like to recommend a class by Marques Brownlee, one of the biggest creators on YouTube. 
his 74-minute class on how to write, film and edit successful videos for YouTube is a must learn for anyone interested in starting a YouTube channel on their own. So with this class, we're gonna go through the sort of production, the creation from start to finish of one of my tech review videos. While MKBHD has a tech review channel with over 14 million subscribers, his class can be applied to any niche or genre on YouTube. I'm excited to share my process, which I haven't really done before because I identify as a self-taught filmmaker. It even gives you the tools to research your interests and grow your channel. It can kind of be about whatever you're passionate about. Some people it's makeup, some people it's clothes and fashion, some people it's cars. For me it's tech, for you, you already know what you like. So without any further ado, let's get started. And this is what's great about Skillshare. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. So take advantage now. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. And now back to cleaning my towels. I need to find a way to pump the water from the rain barrel to the roof. The bigger question is really, does it make sense for me to clean my tiles once or twice a year? Or is it safer and more cost effective not to clean the tiles? Because if I would pay for service of doing that, I'd be paying a couple hundred bucks at a minimum. So I had this water pump that I used for an aquarium that we used to have. And I'm just going to hook this up and connect it to a hose. Now here's the thing, I read some reviews of people cleaning cars with water hoses and even though they filtered their water, made it soft, they still had calcium stains on their cars. And the reason being is that they used just a regular hose that they hooked up to a faucet before and it actually accumulates all those minerals. Luckily I had hoses that I haven't used for regular water, just for rainwater. So those should have not a whole lot of minerals. I did invest in a water-fed pole with a special brush for cleaning solar panels. It extends for 24 foot reach and set me back by about 250 bucks. So let's plug in the water pump and find out if there's going to be enough water feeding to the brush. <laughs> Do you notice the little bird that wants to get in on the action? The water pressure is not great. The good news is I probably won't be emptying that rain barrel all too quickly. I really wanted a pole that is long enough to reach all parts of the roof without me having to actually step on the tiles. They are very slippery and even with a low pitch roof like mine, the chance to fall off the roof is extremely high. So it's gonna have to work from a ladder or not at all. I tried different techniques and settled on a slow up and down brush stroke where I create an actual water film on the tile before brooming the dirt down to the next row and it was quite effective. But it also took me a good hour to clean just one side. Wow, this actually works. Totally clean. Nice, I can actually see the panels. The biggest challenge was the water pressure, especially going up on the top rows. You can see that I only used about five gallons or so. So I called it a day and ordered a bigger pump. While we wait for the new pump to arrive, let's return to my eight months review and how my electricity bill has changed. So our very first bill that we got was for January 2021. We still paid 87 bucks for electricity. That is still a carryover from December when the system wasn't on. The rest that you see in that bill, that's water, trash, and there's a sewage fee. So 87 bucks we spent in electricity. Now let's compare that bill with the previous year, 2020, when we didn't have a system and the electric portion was 125 bucks. Now the system was fully covering the entire month, starting with the February bill. And now our electric went down to 30 bucks. Let's look at what it was the year before. So 30 bucks as opposed to 140 bucks. And in that 30 bucks for the electric part, there's actually a service charge 
of 11 bucks and then some additional fees and taxes to be able to connect to the grid and be able to feed into the grid or pull from it. In March, now my electric bill went actually down to 23.20, .20, so 15 bucks of that is just fees I have to pay every month for just being connected. And the rest of it, I still used up 105 kilowatt hours at 8 cents. Yes, I can produce lots of energy during mid-peak, but I cannot produce energy off-peak at night because there's no sun. But I was anticipating that whatever I generate during mid-peak would then be somewhat calculated against what I use during off-peak at a 2 to 1 ratio, right? Because mid-peak, I would get credit for 16 cents per kilowatt hour. All right, you get the idea. I continue to break down each month, but let's go straight to August. Let's take one more look at what my bill was in August, which is like one of the most intense months in terms of what I pay for electricity. So in the previous year, I paid 204 bucks for electricity alone. Now with the solar system, I only paid 35 bucks. That's about $170 saving. Adding up all those numbers, I come to a total electricity bill for eight months to about 270 bucks. Now I also accumulated a net credit of 207. So my total bill is actually reduced to 62 bucks for eight months. That's a total saving of 1067 compared to the previous eight months in an annualized saving of $1,600. And with that, let's bring it home by cleaning the rest of my tiles and see how much it actually increases my solar production. Nice, here's the new pump. It's about twice as powerful as the other one. With the new pump, I have a good steady flow going to the brush. I perfected my technique, taking my sweet time going from tile to tile and let gravity do most of the work. Okay, I kind of got the hang of it now. Got a really good flow going. Holding that 24 foot pole and just going back and forth, it does go in your arms and I'm definitely gonna feel it tonight. Come and ask me what you want to know and we can go from Just keep turning And here I am still learning About what it is that you need What it is you bleed for This all definitely works But I'm not gonna lie This took me about 6 hours to clean the entire roof I can probably bring that down to 4 hours But not much less uh, We did use pretty much all of the water That's a 55 gallon rain barrel So, is it worth my time? Well, after cleaning my towels, I took a screenshot of the next day that had full sun and I compared it to the closest day of full sun before I started the cleaning process. So on July 20th, we had a full day with 37.7 kilowatt hours. Then I cleaned and then I had an increased production of 41.7, which is an increase of four kilowatt hours or 9.6%. At best though, that is worth $1 per day in additional produced electricity. If we assume that efficiency will decrease as the tiles get dirty again, let's say over a six months period, the median value of additional electricity comes to 88 bucks. So is it worth 88 bucks to work for four hours? Would I pay someone like 250 bucks or so to clean my roof? I think not. In the next video, I really talk about the financials, how much the system has cost us, and I give you a complete rundown of how close we are actually to being completely paid off. Plus, I'll also talk about one service call that I had to place because something did go wrong after a storm. I'll report on how difficult or easy it was to get Tesla to fix it. All of this in the next video. Thanks so much for watching and keep things sunny. Cheers. Oh, and if you're thinking about getting a Tesla solar roof or the panels, which supposedly have the best deal on the market, please click my referral code to check out all the current savings, drawings, and free supercharging miles if you are into getting a Tesla. The link, as always, in the video description. You said